My name is, um, I'm an international cake artist, one. Um, I'm, a, I'm a media personnel. I run entertainment blog and called Nora Brown Talks. You can see it behind me. With, with, with fashion, um, I run events in Cameroon, um, shows. We host shows with other artists. And um, I also run, I'm a social advocate. I also have a foundation um, called Emily Smile Foundation. And then I'm an independent um, artist. I just got into music last year. Hey, it's Kellen. Today, feeling very Baminda because my guest today had um, had me switch my my outfit because I wanted to match her shirt. And you know, I I always like to you know do too much, so I added the hat as well for you guys with the tag on it. I know the tags on it, but my guest today is the finisher. Miss Nora Brown is going to give us the game. We found her. My wife is watching her video. If you haven't seen it, links will be in the description and you can Google. But this video, it's almost, it, it, I don't want to call it beef. I want to call it um, a battle, you know, in the now, what everybody calls Afro beat. So Miss Nora Brown, welcome to the show, The Finisher. Uh, I don't, let's not start any wahala. But um, you've already started it on this song. Let's start with your video, The Finisher. What sparked you from doing that video and you know, saying what you said to whom you said it to? Um, actually, I'm gonna be honest, Kelly. I, mean, I didn't know there was something going on because I didn't know there was something going on and I just saw myself being tagged on social media like um, area mama come and check this area mama represent ours and then this day um, one girl one blogger went to um, took it to twitter so because before that even people were tagging me on facebook like and then I had a look at this mama singing and then I had a friend too that came to my WhatsApp. Hey, Nora, you have to hop on there. I said, nah, do that, do that. And, and I was just like, I was not really like interested. And, and I was like, no, I don't think, I don't think these mamas can, I, don't, I just think they're having, they're just having fun. I don't think they're even ready for a beef, you know? So I, I, I did not pay attention. But then they kept tagging. And then this day, they, um, one of, one of um, our bloggers went on Twitter and went and did a tweet and tagged me to it <laughs> like, like a challenge now. And was like, um, we need our mama, we need a mama from Cameroon to go and represent us in this beef. They can't win, you know? And then they came and tagged my name again, <laughs> like on, on, on the tweet, you know? So I I saw it and then I I, I said okay, um this is what it is I'm I'm just gonna hop on this one, and let me just finish finish the game. So so I replied under the tweet and I was like, uh, you guys me to four hours. So actually, finisher was conceived, produced, done. In 24 hours. In 24 hours. Wow. And I say, and I'm repeating that for you guys because right when you said that, of course, Zoom wants to, you know, act a little funny, but um, Zoom, let us have room to speak, you know. Um, let us have a clear conversation. <laughs> give it, give, give us something. So, you know, music, you say you did it, you know, started about a year ago. What made you, you know, want to get into music? What inspired it? Because music is not, it's not cheap to get into. I mean, it keeps, you know, yeah, videos actually, and time. Actually, um, I, I didn't really want to get into music. Like I didn't, 
I've always been someone that loves music and in my comfort zone, I, I always, I always tend to, to rap um, other artists songs. I've been doing that for years. Um, it's, it's a genre of music that I like, I follow. And I follow a lot of um, rappers and I see the game. Um, I see when the beef, when they respond, and, and I think that is a whole beauty in hip hop, you know. And most of these people, they I don't think they even take it personal. I think it's just, they just know it's the game and and you just have to do it on the mic. Um, if you feel you are up there, you, you get on this one, you get at this person and all that. And that is why you see at the end of the day, um, when these artists even beef each other, they they tend to they tend to even release a track together, and you're wondering, hey, what is going on? Mm -hmm. It's because they don't they don't attach most of the time. They don't really attach emotions to it. Um, so there was my first song, if you can find it on um, YouTube, was a song titled "It's It's a song titled Go Get Bolo." That was that was that was how N Brown was born. Rapper N Brown was go get Bolo. Um, which for those that are not Cameroon pigeon, go get Bolo means go get work. So um, the story behind that track, what prompted me was that I had a I had an online role with a Cameroonian rapper, uh, a Cameroonian rapper called Tila. So we had a little online exchange. And then um, she insulted me using my medical condition. So so I was I was I was pissed off. Um, so despite all the apologies online and stuff, I just I just withdrew and I came, you know, I was really pissed off and I came to I just came to my quiet space and I was just thinking what to do. I said, you know what, I'm not even going to put up um, I'm not gonna put up a long write-up to talk about this, you know. So I just stayed quietly. I went on YouTube because she's a rapper, right? So I'm like, okay, um, I'm really gonna get at you using rap music. And this is me. I've never been in the studio before. I've never recorded anything. So how am I gonna start this? You know, but then <laughs> all what was going on in my head, I, I just had to bring it out. So I went on YouTube and I started reading. I started following videos, um, how to write rap music, um, the bars and everything. I followed a lot of YouTubers and and that was how Get Bolo was born. And I went some YouTube beats, free beats, linked a few. And then I just picked one and I said, yeah, this one, this one is, this one is it, you know. And then I started putting words in it. And We're then I got a friend. It. That's how I got, um, because you asked me what prompted me. So that is what prompted me. Yeah, that was yeah. how I went into music. T I, I want a teachable moment because you mentioned your your condition and your health condition. And I know we talked about it before we, we started. Let people know what that condition is, because many people with that condition, um, they they struggle, you know, especially if they're not in the the Western places. I know Nigerians here in America who won't go to Africa because they say my 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 condition. I'll let you disclose what that condition is. I don't I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to say it. Uh, yeah, um, I mean I I'm not ashamed of saying it um, because I'm a, I'm an advocate for it. Yeah, I I have sickle cell anemia, and and I don't think it's proper if if you're having um, a little insult, um, a little, you know, exchange or argument with someone, and then, and then you turn to use something which they don't brought on themselves, which they didn't bring on themselves, and then you use it to insult them, you know. So, so I found it a little bit, you know, uh, um, above the line, above the limit, you know. So, so I just said, hey, I'm, I'm just, I'm gonna come back. You know, I'm gonna come back. So everybody just knew that, you know, the whole thing had died. It was over. 
because I went quiet, I continued doing my other activities, but at the background, I was I was coming up with, with fire. I, I was preparing something. Um, I was learning the art and stuff. So when I was done, I had to call up a friend um, who is an artist and I said, hey, I want to do this. <laughs> and he was like, wow, are you sure, Nora? I was like, yeah, 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 I want to do this. So I said, I don't know how to record it. He said, oh yeah, come to my house, I have it. So yeah, I went there, we recorded it. When we finished, I listened to it again. I said, oh my God, this is, this is harsh. And it's like, oh Nora, are you scared already? <laughs> and then I was like, I was like, no, I'm going to put this out there. I'm going to put it. I've done it and I'm going to put it out, you know. So, you know, so it was interesting because, you know, that was really the moment I learned a lot. And, and then when the song was done, the master, I was like, oh, my God, this is this is beautiful. This is a banger, you know. So I told him. I don't want to release this like an audio. What am I going to do? Um, I want this thing to drop the way. I don't have time. Do you have any ideas? And it's like, oh, Nora, come on. That's just a diss track. Um, it's easy, man. You have phones and stuff. I said, what do you mean? How do you, they do videos? I need a video. He said, where are you going to get that now here? We don't have time. He said, he said get your son to do the video and we'll send it to someone to edit it. And, <laughs> and that's it out there. And, and that was what we did, you know, it was, it was no professional, I think, but we, I mean, the whole thing came out so professionally done. And, and that's the importance of orientation. Like, you know, when you don't, you, you are trying to do something, when you meet the right people, you know, they tell you things to do, when you put the pieces together, it brings, it just brings a, a, a smashing project, you know? So, so that was what, that was what we did. And, and and yeah, and then the song was out there. Now, when it came out there, the the, the reactions was amazing. Like, oh my God, I I mean every single Cameroonian block picked it up. Like when they listened and listened, they were able to detect who I was talking to. And then they started doing posters, tagging me together with the RT, Nora, you know, like. And then some people were, there were, you know, there were other people that were appreciating the talent. Like, oh my God, who could have ever known Nora can, can sing, not to talk of rap? Like, you know, so a lot of, so, so I mean, it was, it was interesting because I was reading all the comments. I was looking at all the reactions and I sat down in my own couch. I was just laughing because, you know, um, I was just laughing at the reaction, seriously. Um, some people got too emotional. Yeah, it's normal. Um, some people insulted me. No wonder she did not accept her apology. This girl is weak. You know, the, the was, there was a lot, there was a lot of um, um, mixed reactions on that. But then it, the, the, the majority of it, I would say like 90% of the reaction was, positive like people could see so despite the mixture of emotions but at least they could see talent you know and and they appreciated the talent let me ask so you that what was, do you let me ask you what do you think about when people say you can't make you know cameroon music african music unless you're in africa many artists i've heard in the states and promoters, they say, if you want to make music that the Cameroon blogs, like you say, pick up and then people are playing, you need to come back home. Do you think that's still true? Um, well, yeah, that was that was a myth before, but I think I think things are changing now because I, I've heard a lot of artists that have complained about that. And then I've I've also had a, a very good friend of mine. Um, that's the first, that's the guy I'm talking about, the one that oriented me um, to do this, who gave me all the tricks and everything. I mean, he did that, you know, he did that, spent so much money, went back home. He's, I mean, he's a fantastic artist and stuff and invested so much, but then he never made it. 
you know, he never still made it. He he was still he was still snubbed. I think it's just um it's just some inferiority complex that over time they are beginning to see. Um I think Cameroon now is beginning to see that diasporans are the ones um holding the entertainment industry because if you we can I mean we can comfortably say about let me do, don't make it too high about 75 percent of 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 the record labels that you see will sign artists even back home those record labels the owners of stuff are all in diaspora you know so at the end of the day if if everybody in the diaspora now has to withdraw and say you are not giving us attention, I mean they know what will happen. But I think now they are beginning to understand um, some of their awards, um, some of their award awarding bodies are beginning to add categories for diaspora and artists. Um, I will not say that it, it's already like real up there the way we want it to be, but I think they are beginning to incorporate this. And, and also I think that the, 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 the success, what made, what made uh, um, my, my first track, which, which even came like a diss track, to be like everybody picked it up was because it, it, was, it was some kind of a controversial um, tune, um, the message and everything. And then also because I'm, I'm, I'm well known um, in the media space because of my, my works, the numerous things I've done. So I think that as well helped for it to, to, to be pushed, for it to go to many um, channels because, you know, once a popular blog picks it, the next will pick it and stuff. And that's how the chain went. But we just hope for it that things will get better um, I think I think it's it's getting better. I think they are beginning to pay attention to 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 diaspora and Cameroonian artists. Okay, and it's interesting because you know as African music grows, you have people who okay, if that's true, and I even know folks you know have done beautiful videos in the UK and the US, but. Even folks in the diaspora will say, no, until you go back home and you film that. Naomi Achu, until you film that video back home, we're not going to support it. But then when Stanley Ano. Yeah. yeah, I hear that as well. Yeah, I hear that but, as well. But then, then it took, you know, when Stanley Ano got the MTV award in 2014, shout out to Stanley and his team. Um, I know. And, He's you doing know, well. But he had to, it's like he had to fall bush, right? And then he, he's gone all around the world. He's the ambassador here. And he's, uh, you know, on, has a global platform because he got out of Cameroon. So it's just kind of ironic that if you want to make music here, the old way is you need to come here. But if you really want to blow up and get that big money, and, and I've talked to Stanley before, you know, to, to blow up on a global, you have to leave because Yawunde, Douala, Kribi, and Limbe, there's only so many shows you can do. And, exactly. And if you get to Nigeria, we already know how Nigeria is, you know, they have their own stars. You know, heck, and Kim Owa says, get back. Let me get my next single out, right? So it's just <laughs> funny how that works. And it's, it's almost like people want to hold people back to not validate them as being, oh, you're not African enough because you're not doing it here. Hopefully that's the old way. Let's move on from that, Wahala, because times are changing. But yeah, you know, like when I did um, that, when I did Go Get Bolo, then a month later, I did a sequel to the same beef, um, which was Mo Ali. Um, this time around, I, I did, the sound was um, British, like I, I sang it to have the British flow, um, the kind of rap, English rap. Although I used I used pidgin English, but the beats and the way I was flowing on the beats, it was like the kind of music that plays here, you know. And then mm -hmm. I had 
I had a lot of reviews and if you go and listen to Mo Ali, I had a lot of reviews um, and some 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 of my um, friends who are media, they came to my inbox and said, oh, Nora, you know, um, this kind of sounds like that, you know, they can never, um, they will not really catch Africans. Africans will not really appreciate that kind of sound. You know, I told them that, hey, um, I know, I know, I know what I'm doing and I know the kind of music, like if I really want to push myself forward and want to do music, I know exactly the kind of music I want to do. And, and I'm introducing it gradually. Um, people take time to change. And this is just me trying to introduce my style, which it will get there someday. <laughs> So um, so that is what I've been doing. And, and unfortunately, uh, 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 um, finisher is, is a typical English, that's drill, that's proper drill. And, 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 and yeah, a lot of Africans, a lot of Africans, Ghanaians in particular, I mean, they, they loved finisher. They love finisher like, you know, definitely that, and that's a UK sound drill yes and let's 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 make it very clear uk drill because you know here in america where we play the world series but we play no teams outside of the continent they'll say no drill music is from chicago but i remember being in the uk and listening to <laughs> grime and garage yeah, and you hear the different I, genres yeah, right. in your life yeah and, and you're and but you have to be exposed so you only know what you know sometimes and what we know about you is you use the music to, you know, not just go after people, but you're using your platform um, to push. And, and you have a real love. When you said traditional English music, I thought you were talking about this. You might stand Which one? up, people. I'm playing the British national anthem. Oh, and, 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 and I, and I, and I, and I sing <laughs> but, but no, I, we're, gonna sing, we're gonna sing for the king. Oh my god! And, and let's talk about that just real quick because I want this to be a teachable moment, especially to people in America and maybe globally, because you have a real love for the UK. And I want you, because it ties into your health and even your siblings' health, can you just tell the people what you told me off air, why you love the country? Because people who don't deal with the things that you deal with health-wise and what your family deals with, it, you don't understand until it's you, right? You don't understand until it touches home. You know, you hear about bad news all day, but until something happens. So tell us, why do you love the UK and why you call it home? Um, yeah, as, as you know, as I was saying earlier to you, I mean, I, I call UK home because number one, from the first day, I mean, from the first day I stepped my foot in this country, you know, um, my health, my health became a priority in the medical system. That's, that's, I mean, from the first day, from the first day I fell sick and ambulance rushed for me. I mean, they even discovered things, they even discovered other stuff in my system that they had not even discovered in Cameroon, which they mm. had not even told me. But they discovered those. They discovered those stuff in me, in from tests and stuff that they did, and and you know they started they started working on them. They started asking me questions. Have you ever been told you have this? Have you ever been told you have this and all that? You know, and and yeah, I mean, since then my health has been top priority. Um, it's. It's amazing, you know, it's it's amazing because like, let me give for instance, like today, uh, um, yesterday, I missed my appointment. Um, for some reason, I, I completely forgot because the time was just immediately after school run for my kids. And then when I remembered, I had to call the hospital 
And then they said, oh, sorry, we cannot reschedule and stuff. But then an hour later, the consultant calls me and like, you know, we did not see you last time and we're not seeing you again. And you know, this is very important. We need to send your drugs. And hey, bam, they did the prescription and everything and put it on the post. Next day, delivery courier is at my door ringing the bell. Yeah. I mean, because they know the importance of, of you having that medication. They know the importance of you not skipping one day. Like they don't even want you to skip a day without taking it because they're monitoring a lot of stuff that is going on in your body, a lot of things that are happening to a particular organ and stuff. That doesn't happen in Africa. It doesn't happen. Yeah. The, well, they They're say the, Am the Amber Boys have a new delivery system. They can get it to you in less than 24 hours. I'm, I'm being, I'm being, I'm being so right. funny, you guys. Yeah, but yeah, yeah but, funny, isn't it? you know, and, and you know, it's, it's. I mean, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't beat that. You know, you can't, you can't really beat that. I've, I've taken ill back home. Um, you know, when my mother passed, my dad was like, oh you know, no, you need to come back home. You know, um, the businesses are struggling. You know, it's you guys of God. You know, I mean, he wants he wants his children around, you know, after losing his two sons and, and all that, which I understand. And then he was like, you know, we'll get a doctor to follow you up and stuff. And then boom, this is me now, taking so ill for almost a week, we are going from hospital to hospital. And then every single day, I'm growing weaker and weaker. And then my dad is looking at me like, what's going on? I'm like, daddy, all I know is that I'm really weak, I'm tired. And then I'm asking the hospital, can you do my blood counts? Let me know what is going on. You know, it's very important. I know my blood count because I'm losing energy. There's a lot of fatigue going into my system. I understand my body so well. And then they do my blood count and they tell me, but yeah, hemoglobin is okay. It's reading seven point. Hello, it wasn't. But the way I felt that night, it like I slept and I felt myself struggling, breathless. I said, God, no, 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 this is not happening. Something is wrong. You know, so the following morning, that was me. I, I woke my dad up so early. I said, dad, I need to leave the country like today. The next available flight, even if it's a first class or anything, get me that flight. I don't care how much it is. I need to leave the country like today. You know, so my dad was like, is it that serious? I said, daddy, if I stay one more day in this country, you risk losing me. So I have to go. You know, and mm. and that was what we did. And the only flight that was there was Air Maroc. And yeah, we picked it up. When I was going to the airport, so that afternoon I was even so weak, I could not really even walk. My dad was like, What is going on? I said, Daddy, I don't know. So he went to town and got me a set of crutches. And you know, because I was unable to support myself. But that was me getting into the UK. First thing as soon. All through that flight, almost 12 hours journey, I felt like my heart was just going to cut into two. You know, I even felt like something would happen to me on, on flights, you know, because if I had even said I was sick, they wouldn't allow me board that flight, mm. you know. So I had to, I had to really hide my illness, um, that I was really in a bad state just to get on that flight and leave the country. And, and that was me. Immediately the ambulance picked me. I went into hospital. By the time they ran test on me, within an hour, they, immediately the results came back. It was catastrophe in the hospital. Like I saw myself with almost, <laughs> like the consultant just pressed the alarm bell near my bed. Before I knew it, all the emergency doctors 
were in my cubicle and they were rushing me to resource. That's to tell you how bad it was. I need to know, I need to know for the audience because they'll say, oh, well, you have sickle cell, that's why. But I told you before we started, I got E. coli there and I, I felt similar. And, you know, I didn't go to the hospital but I, my, my wife is a physician. I have concierge medicine, right? My, my mm-hmm. oldest went to the hospital for a NEBA. But um, I want to know, what did they give you? Because for me, as soon as I got here, and my in-laws didn't want me to fly. I mean, I was bleeding and things are coming out of places they're not supposed to come out of for men. Um, what did they give you? Because as soon as I got here... I got my remedies, my medication. I did my testing. In all fairness, I can't blame the Cameroon medicine because I didn't have to go to the hospital. I was so worried about my oldest. I was already in the hospital at one point and I was just mm-hmm. suffering through. But you, you, but I understand how service can be and it, it, it can be kind of slow, at least what my Peking it was. But what did they give you that got you to bounce back and was it right away? Because people need to know that. So if they ever do get sick outside of the country, wherever they are, they can say, well, check for this, give me this. Because the, once I got the medication, I was good. So for you, tell us your story. So, so the point is, I asked, because I asked in, in Cameroon that I want to know my blood count, right? I want to know my hemoglobin, what it's reading. And I don't know whether it was their, 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 their labor, whether they call them what, I don't know whether it's their, their, their physician or him or whatever, what, whether it was the lab technician or a mistake or whatever, I don't know. They bring results and they tell me I'm on a hemoglobin of seven, right? Naturally, seven is even already getting low for me, right? But then the way I was feeling, I was like, I told my dad straight away, I said, daddy, the kind of fatigue I'm feeling, I don't, I don't think these results make sense. And all through, they were busy telling me I have, it's, it's just malaria and typhoid. That is what they were telling me. But when I got here, the first thing, blood count, the my levels of hemoglobin, like I was just struggling to survive. So when the doctor did that, when those doctors came in, everybody flocked to my bed. The pain on my body was alarming. Like each doctor, I mean, as they were wheeling me to the resource, each doctor was pressing a part of my body. Somebody was holding my rig so tight. Another person was on my feet, in my ankle. Another person was on my tie. Like I wasn't understanding what was going on. But then they were putting pressure at different points of my body, rushing me to the resource while they had communicated with the blood bank to bring blood. Now, when, when they had put me now in a stable place after like two hours, I was in resource for two hours. When I was stable, they knew that I was stable enough. And I had to ask the doctor, I said, why were they pressing me all over? And he was like, you were just, you were just surviving on, on, on grace. Like, I don't even know how you, I don't even know how you survived such high altitude flight Mm -hmm. with less than five grams of blood in your body. Like, I don't know how you survived it. That is still a mystery to us. So they were putting pressure. They were putting pressure on parts of my body to to help the little blood that was in my system to to concentrate more, to, 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 to concentrate more on the heart. To keep it to keep it functioning while they, they rush to bring blood at the blood bank. So they even they even had to put a cannula, but on the big, you know, they had to get an anesthetic doctor to put to put um, a cannula on the jugular vein, like on your neck, on my neck here, to put to put the cannula there for them to put the blood to get the blood into the system as fast as possible. So in all, in all fairness, because the flight didn't help that, 
it impacted that. Um, in in Cameroon, if you would have got more blood, or if I mean, would you have maybe felt better? And I asked that because I'm trying to learn because at one yeah, point, yeah, yeah, because if I had if if they had seen that my hemoglobin was low, definitely, and they had the blood to give me mm -hmm. there and then, it would have at least giving me a little bit of energy you know to do to, they to have carry it on. or did they deny you they even made a mistake in the, the the they said my hemoglobin was not that bad that the levels were not that low so it means their lab technician did not even get the readings right because they were saying on like the day before i left you were saying my hemoglobin was on seven but then i flew to london and my hemoglobin was under five grams. That is, that is, then that is your dying. Like you're gone. That is, that is the high rate of anemia. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, the, they, they got that part wrong, which doesn't even, we, 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 we'll talk, we'll talk more about I know that. Also, also, mm -hmm. also I've seen, I've seen a lot of cases of warriors that have passed, ha, have passed away because we have put requests, um, they have put requests for blood. Um, I even advertise on Facebook, like, please, we need blood, blood group number this, and all those kind of stuff. They don't even have blood in the blood banks. Okay. Maybe if they had even seen that I needed blood, the blood banks is always empty. They don't have blood. They will tell you, you need to bring a blood first. Oh, okay. Okay. I got you. Well, we're not going to have it be because I can it's already hear some camera blood. Yeah, I, I can hear some that Cameroonians say. Procedure back home. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't want the Cameroonian uh, blogs to pick us up and say we were beating up on Cameroon while wearing Cameroon attire. But no, we do have. I mean, this is something, yeah. this is something I, this is something I say all the time. I, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, I say it all the time on my platform, mm -hmm. all the time, because I'm an advocate and I want hospitals. If I don't, if we don't speak these things out, then we are not going to affect the change that we need. I mean, our hospitals can do better. You know, I, I advocate a lot, for, especially for blood donations. I, I put these things up that please people, I mean, those of you who are healthy, blood giving blood is not going to kill you. You know, be. But you know why? You know why in the West there's so much blood because people can get paid, and and some people pay their you know small small bills because they donate blood. I don't know if that's the same thing everywhere. I I don't you know. Honestly, I don't really think I don't really think blood donation is being paid though i don't think blood donors get paid okay in the in the in the u.s they they do because many people in college I when mean, we went yeah they 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 would make I mean, their yeah money. i don't think yeah i just think um blood donors i think is voluntary but i know that they take care of them but it's not like something that is is paid or stuff mm -hmm. but even here there's currently there's currently like campaigns going on for for black people that they need more black donors. It's, it's just like, it's something that black people are not wanting to do. Like maybe it's not in their culture, like, you know, black people naturally um, don't believe in donating anything. The worst thing is even come to them to talk about uh, um, um, organ donation or things like that. They don't even, they don't even want to hear aqua. about. It. They don't even want to hear about it. You understand? So, <laughs> yeah. so it's um they just they just think it's something mystical, and and all of that, which which is a narrative that, you know, we are trying to change, but it's something it's something that is is going to take time as well. I for one, if if they were able to, if I was able to be a blood donor. I will, I will give blood because I'm not going to die. You just put my hand there. 
one hour or so, they take the, the bag they need and I'm gone. If, if I have enough of it in my system, I'm clear, I don't have an infection, I don't have a disease that can pass to the next person, I would, I would give, but unfortunately, I cannot even be a donor of anything. <laughs> well, well, but you are, and, and, and that goes in, you are a, do a donor of your time. Um, I ask everybody, what is their community give back that they are doing or that they'd like to do in the future? I'd love for you to tell the people yours because you are donating your time. <laughs> In times, I mean, sometimes I I have outreach in Cameroon. I've done a lot of outreach in Cameroon. I've I've gone there myself, despite the despite the war and whatever is going on. I mean, I've gone to Bamenda twice. I've been I've been to the southwest. I've been to Motengene to the Baptist Hospital. I've been in Upita and trying Yaoundé. I've been in you know I've been in you know, I've been in places sometimes. I've, I've even gone right to the extent of sending my volunteers. I paid for them to go and do outreach in Garua, up north in Cameroon, you know? So, mm -hmm. so we, we, try that, we try as much as possible to touch um, a lot of places just to let these warriors know that they are not alone. You know, I, I mean, we, I do a lot of education on my platform, educate, talk. Um, sometimes when I'm ill, I go live for them to understand that it doesn't mean that because, because I'm here, I am not, I don't fall sick or because you see me every day, I wear beautiful dresses. So don't, because some of them will message me and tell me that what can they do so that they will never fall sick again. <laughs> You know, and because, you know, they don't see that part of me often. And then they just think that I'm free from everything. I don't, I don't get crisis anymore. Hello, I do. I do get crisis, but it's just that it's controlled. I don't have it that frequent as I used to have it because we take medications that try to control it for you to have a few of them. So sometimes I can go for a year, two years without having a crisis some years I can have three or four in that here. So it, it just depends, you know, it just depends, but nobody should get it twisted and think that because I'm 40 now, it means I don't, I, I don't have any crisis or I don't get sick. I do. So I, I, I try as much as possible to educate them and let them know the best way to manage themselves. Um, live a healthy life. I mean, that is as much as we do. And if the foundation has funds, we we try as much as possible to, from donations from goodwill people, we try as much as possible to reach out. We help some warriors. If they reach out to us that their child is sick, they don't have money to afford it, we try our best. Some we say that, okay, we have a donor for blood. We don't have money for the processing based on what we have, we can support. Sometimes we run short, we don't have. I myself, um, from my own earnings, and I have a certain percentage as a philanthropist that you know, I, I put down for the foundation and support when necessary. So, so that is what I do. I mean, and I, that is and I, I, can... I love what you do. And I want people to check out Amelia's Smile. But let the people know, because a good storyteller always has the people wanting more. So they go to your blogs, they go to your YouTube, they go everywhere. Let them know where they can go if they want to get involved in anything that you do, or even just go back and forth with you and say, okay, you want to battle? I got another battle. Because the more you battle, the more Wahala, the more the algorithm, they it loves it, right? I mean, the drama is what people yeah, love I mean, to it's, see. It's just exactly, it's fun. I mean, um, some people take it too personal, but at the end of the day, I look at it like entertainment. I look at it like um, fun. Um, I mean, finish out was something that, okay, these are two people that I'm coming out. I didn't want to select one person. So I had to come at the two at once. Um, but anyway, as you said, those who want to support Emily Smile, just go to www.com. Emily smile.com 
And you, every information you want is on there on our website, what we do and, and everything. So, and there is a link there for you to support us, to donate to us through our PayPal. And yes, your donations goes for a good course. Um, we help warriors in Africa get a better life. And also so, let them know the cakes as well, uh, about your, your, your <laughs> cakes, where they can go and get a custom cake. They're, they're beautiful. Okay, yeah. Um, I, for my cakes, you, you can search me on Nora Brown Cakes, um, Nora Brown Cakes on IG and Facebook. You can see my cakes there. Um, I think I've done a cake in... Minnesota. I've been contracted to do a wedding cake in Minnesota. Um, so I did that. That was a big wedding piece. <sighs> that was like <laughs> my second, that was the second international um, um, project I ever did. Uh, yeah, it was a big one. Um, I flew okay. from London just for that to go do a cake in Minnesota. So yes, yeah, so I'm right here. Um, on that as well. Yes, so I touch, I touch a lot of stuff. <laughs> you, you touch a lot of stuff. You know, she. this is a person who has a degree in computer and information systems. She's also partnered with um, another guest of ours with the Greenhouse Ventures, which is a, a great, great thing and having great progress. So, you know, with unity, we all win people. And I want you to go look in the description box. Majority of you are listening to this, but whether you are listening or watching, I want you to look in the description box, tap in, um, say hi. Um, if you ask her anything, ask her about her business and not bride price. I think she's good in that area. So you guys, we were, you guys, you guys, make sure you share the game. Nora, I thank you for coming on. Thank you. Thank you so much, Colleen. I mean, Hey family, on November 20th through December 1st, 2022, we will have the all inclusive Kenya trip. Now, a lot of times people have said, hey, Phil, when's the next trip we'd like to go? I want to see Africa for myself, but well, this is the time to go. Everything will be taken care of. All the excursions are paid. You can do monthly payments. You know, they'll have a safari and a six city tour. You will see Charlie Island, which is something that we did not see last time on the tour. This tour will be 12 days instead of seven days. So make sure to secure your place on the trip by going to www.wbsvs.com, make your deposit, and then you can start making your payments and we'll see you in Kenya. Hi guys, I'm Kai Gabiam from the Diaspora channel, a lover of Africa. If you love Africa as well, and you would love to visit one day or to relocate to Africa, there is a course out there for you and this course is my first trip to africa a course well put together by a seasoned traveler kellen cash coleman this course is designed to prepare you to travel better which will save you both time and money and the great news is this course cost only $20 guys it can't get any better go right now and enroll to this course at www.diversifygame.com